Well, as you can probably see, I'm back on my gray squirrel control duties and it's going pretty well. Now, this particular feeder site produced a heck of a lot of squirrels for me a couple of years ago, but I've not shot here for a while and it's clear that they're making something of a comeback. Now, the landowners have noticed that the tree damage is on the increase, so they've asked me to come back and have another go at the squirrels. Now, I'm reluctant to talk too much while they're so eager to feed, so I'm going to carry on shooting and then hopefully we'll get a few more and I'll stop and talk and just tell you a little bit about how I've got them queuing up like this and the kit that I'm using to deal with them. Well, actually had two squirrels on the feeder at the same time then, and the one that got a bit too defensive and aggressive bullied the other one off, obviously paid the price for being so greedy. That said, I would imagine that the other one will be back pretty soon, and it's not going to end well for him either. Really nice to see a nuthatch visiting the feeder then. Now, apart from the odd woodpecker, that's actually the first small bird to visit the feeders today. And I think that's partly because of the number of squirrels that have been coming and going. And I've, I've got a sneaky feeling that now that they're significantly reduced, it's giving the small birds just that bit more confidence to come back and feed from the feeding station.
I'm going to make that the last one. It has slowed down quite significantly over the last sort of 20 minutes, half hour. Believe it or not, the bulk of those squirrels were shot in under two hours. But the main reason is, for wrapping it up now, the midges, I don't know if you can see them, they're not very big, but they're starting to bite and it's getting pretty irritating. They've been a bit, bit annoying to me, but Nikki's getting eaten alive, so we're going to make a move soon. However, I did say at the outset that I'd chat a little bit about the kit and how I've set up to get these squirrels coming so freely to this feeder, so we'll just take a bit of time out and do that now. Okay, so as for the kit that I've been using this evening, the gun is the BRK Pathfinder XR, which is very similar to the Ranger XR, um, only it's got a bottle instead of a cylinder, so it gives you more shots per fill. Um, and I've got to say, paired with the 0dB silencer, it is very, very quiet. Now, it's also got a Huma regulator, brilliant two-stage trigger, side lever action, and on top of all that, it's got Brocock's really neat folding stock mechanism, which means that this little air gun can pack away incredibly small. Um, I mean, it's compact and light, just in its normal guise. Um, and also it's got Brocock's adjustable stock, so you can adjust length of pull to suit you. Uh, this one is 177 calibre. I've been using 10.3 grain uh, Range Master Sovereign Hunter pellets, and it really likes them. Um, I've paired the gun with the MTC King Cobra, which probably seems a fairly large scope to put on such a compact air, air gun, but I've got to say it's pin sharp and I really like it. And also it gives really nice scope cam footage with the um, Eagle Vision scope cam setup. So hopefully you will have been able to see that through some of the scope cam footage that I've captured. Um, as ever, I've got the scope held on with sports match scope mounts. Now, as for how I've managed to get the squirrels queuing up like this, now as I said at the outset, this is an area that's produced a lot of squirrels in the past and the fact that I haven't shot here for a while means that they have, you know, the numbers have built up again. But the key thing here has been patience. I put up the feeder well, probably three weeks ago now and I haven't shot it, I've just kept it filled up. Um, because what you want is squirrely activity. It's no good attracting two or three and killing them. Basically, squirrels are incredibly inquisitive and if they see activity from other squirrels, that's just going to attract more and more and more. So if you can hold back for a few weeks, you will definitely shoot more once you start actually you know, setting up to, um, to put the sessions in. And in fact, I've had so many visiting that I've had to put up a second feeder just to stop myself from having to make really frequent visits to keep it filled up. So, um, bait-wise I've been using peanuts. Now, I know they're expensive, but I do regard them as the most effective way to get squirrels coming to feeding stations. But that said, if you've got a bait that you're happy to use, then go ahead and use that. So once I knew that the squirrels were coming to this feeding station, I then went ahead and built the hide. Now, it's just a fairly simple camo net. I weaved in a little bit of dead branches and a few other weeds and things, but in all honesty, because I'm in this block of conifers on the opposite side of the ride from the feeding station, I'm in pretty good shade here. I've not even had to wear a head net, and I wonder, you know, these squirrels are so determined to get the feeder if I'd even be able to get away without a hide here. Um, so obviously the other great thing is I know it's about 25 metres to the feeding station, so I've got my setup set exactly for that range, shooting off of sticks. I pretty much expect that every shot is going to result in a clean kill. Now, again, these midges, they are tiny, and I don't know if you can see them, but they are being a real pain this evening. So that's, that's half the reason that we're scooting, apart from the fact, like I say, that the action's really tailed off. But I will be back again. I'll top up this feeder before we leave. Obviously, we've got a lot of squirrels to pick up. Um, but I'll be back again pretty soon for another go at them, and I will remember to bring some insect repellent.
So that's how I go about my summer squirrel control. Just watch out for those midges. Next up, I've got a handy solution to keep your PCPs topped up and ready for action. Many of us really like our recoilless PCP air guns, but they do have a snag in that they need to be refilled. Now, generally, that means that you're dependent on a shop for air bottle refills, or you need to labor away with a stirrup pump. Now, more recently, compressors have come onto the market, and some of them have had their downfalls in that they've been bulky, difficult to use, or unreliable, but not this one. This is the Umarex Ready Air Compressor, distributed in the UK by John Rothery Wholesale, and it genuinely does provide a dependable and portable air filling solution. So, this compressor fills up to a pressure of 300 bar and it retails for £839.95. Now, that isn't cheap, but it has been built to last. And if you have one or two shooting friends who live fairly close to you, you may even be able to club together and buy one to share. Now, as you can see, this compressor is pretty compact and what's more, you don't have to mess around filling or draining oil and water. So refilling with this compressor really is a quick and easy task. In fact, the unit is more or less ready to go straight from the box in which you will find all the accessories you need to get it up and running and to keep it in tip top condition not that it should need a great deal of maintenance. So in there, you will find AC leads with UK and EU plugs and a massive set of crocodile clips so you can power the compressor from your car battery. Now there's also a hose in there and various attachments so that you can connect the relevant pr uh, probe or plug for your air gun or air guns via Foster connector. As I've already said, you don't have to mess about loading this compressor with oil or water. All you have to do is push in the plug or connect the crocodile clips red to red and black to black, and then uh, screw on the hose either with a 14 millimeter spanner or a set of adjustables. Uh, the hose even has a wire guard around it to prevent it from kinking. Switch on the power and the control console lights up, showing information about the compressor's status. Now here you can see information such as temperature, working time, the pressure inside your gun and the pressure that you have set the compressor to fill to. Now the instructions on how to navigate the control console are fairly basic but they are easy to follow. You can choose whether the display shows pressure as PSI or bar and whether temperature is displayed as Fahrenheit or Celsius. Now you can also adjust the temperature for the auto cutout, but in all honesty, I'd be inclined to leave that as Umarex has set it. Now the main controls that you really find yourself using are the up and down buttons just to adjust the, the fill pressure to which you intend to fill your gun. So with the gun connected, and the bleed tightened, you simply set the pressure that you want, press the on off button, and the compressor kicks into action. I've yet to use a compressor which I would describe as quiet. Now, this one does make quite a noise with the compressor and the fan going, but it isn't unbearably loud. And from a safety point of view, it is very reassuring to know that it's gonna cut out as soon as it reaches the pressure that you've dialed in. Now, when it does stop, all you need to do is turn the bleed to release the pressure from the hose, and then you're ready to disconnect your gun and get shooting. As for fill times, well, as with any means of charging, things are gonna move quicker if you go for top-ups rather than a complete refill from empty. Now, the Ready Air compressor is not made for filling dive tanks, but it does a brilliant job with both cylinder and bottle air guns. Now, my HW100K only has a 105cc capacity in its cylinder, 
and the ready air filled that from 100 bar up to 200 bar in about one and a half minutes. Now my RM8UC here has a 200cc bottle and the ready air took just under three minutes to deliver the same 100 to 200 bar fill. As I said at the start, this compressor is extremely well made and needs minimal maintenance. Now it does actually feature an active charcoal filter to keep your air guns internal safe and there is a spare one supplied. Now the frequency with which you're going to need to carry out maintenance obviously depends on how often you use the unit but you should be able to tell when it's required because fill times will start to slow down. Now as for spares you also get seals, washers and a replacement fuse. The ready air compressor is about 27 centimeters long by 27 centimeters high by 23 centimeters deep and those dimensions include the components that jut out from it and that means it should comfortably fit into the boot of most cars. Now it weighs about 10 kilos and that is significantly lighter than a lot of compressors that claim to be portable and it also balances very well on its handle. It really is simply a case of grab it and go. So that is the Ready Air Compressor from Umarex. It's a really tidy looking piece of kit. It's nicely made, it's very sturdy, and it fills to 300 bar. Not that I should really imagine that most tutors will need to push it quite that hard. Now, obviously I've not had a chance to give it the full test of time, but it does feel as though it's gonna give years of dependable service. On top of that, it's easy to transport, it gives you versatile power options, and it's really simple to use. So as far as PCP filling solutions go, I think this is a very good one. I'm afraid that's all we've got time for this week, but as ever, we'll be back with much, much more in two weeks time. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to like and subscribe. It doesn't cost anything to subscribe and it means you won't miss a single episode. Also, do take a look at the subscription offers that we've got for Airgun World magazine. Now, you should be able to find a link to that in the show description. So, I'll be back again in a fortnight. In the meantime, enjoy your shooting and stay safe.